Coming up, the Nation Institute senior fellow Chris Hedges' book, I Don't Believe in Atheists, examines the debate on religion and faith in America. In his latest book, I Don't Believe in Atheists, Nation Institute fellow Chris Hedges examines the debate over religion and faith in America. He argues that a group he calls the New Atheists are as dangerous as the religious extremists they condemn. The event hosted by the World Affairs Council of Northern California in San Francisco is an hour. Thank you very much. Um, I uh, had spent two years researching and writing a book on the radical Christian right in this country, uh, traveling to uh, pro-life weekends in uh, Valley Forge, Pennsylvania, attending an evangelism explosion week-long seminar at Coral Ridge Ministries, uh, uh, in part taught by D. James Kennedy, uh, creation weekends in Missouri, uh, uh, visits to the Creation Museum in Peterborough, Kentucky, a $25 million edifice uh, where they brought in the people who did the animatronic figures at uh, Universal Studios to recreate scenes like the Garden of Eden, which have included dinosaurs with saddles on them. Um, uh, and I struggled uh, in the book not to write a history of the Christian right, but uh, their belief system and uh, what it is that propels people into the arms of this non-reality-based uh, movement, uh, which I think uh, really in, it, it can be summed up in terms of personal and economic despair. Uh, I find the radical Christian right in this country frightening. I think it's probably the most dangerous mass movement in American history. Uh, it was on my radar screen as a seminarian at Harvard Divinity School. I had a great professor, Dr. James Luther Adams, who had been in Germany in 1935 and 1936, working with the so-called Confessing Church, led by Martin Niemöller and Dietrich Bonhoeffer, uh, comprised of individuals such as Albert Schweitzer, Karl Barth. Uh, and um, Adams saw in this movement, long before we did, uh, disturbing similarities with the so-called German Christian Church, which was pro-Nazi. Uh, he told us, he was then 80, uh, that we, when we were his age, we would all be fighting the Christian fascists. Uh, I left the country, spent almost two decades abroad, came back, and found that the radical Christian right had moved from the fringes of American society into the corridors of power, the executive, the legislative, and the judicial branches of government that had created powerful systems of indoctrination through Christian radio and television um, and Christian schools. Uh, and uh, I think in a period of instability, whether that's caused by an economic meltdown or another catastrophic terrorist attack, I spent a year of my life, by the way, covering al-Qaeda out of Paris for the New York Times, and there wasn't an intelligence chief that I interviewed who used the word if, it was always when. Uh, I think uh, this movement, uh, combined with uh, forces, anti-democratic forces uh, that have been empowered by this administration, uh, could radically reshape America in ways that we've not seen since the nation's founding. Uh, all of that is by way of saying that uh, I take the rise of religious extremism and Christian fundamentalism in this country very, very seriously. Movements that uh, fuse the iconography and language of religion with the iconography and language of nationalism, something that I saw in the former Yugoslavia, I cover as the Balkan bureau chief there for the New York Times during the war, uh, is toxic and uh, extremely dangerous and proto-fascist. Um, following this book, I was invited in May of last year uh, to Royce Hall at UCLA to debate Sam Harris, author of The End of Faith and Letter to a Christian Nation. And two days later, flew to San Francisco and went to Berkeley to debate Christopher Hitchens, uh, not an experience I'd wish on anyone in this room, uh, author of God is Not Great. Now, any serious student of theology uh, uh, cannot uh, have a complete education without paying homage to the importance of atheism in the Western intellectual tradition. 
Uh, first of all, most of the great uh, philosophical and theological uh, reformers were condemned in their day as atheists and heretics. One thinks of Spinoza or even Martin Luther. Uh, I don't think anyone uh, who uh, has a complete education in theology uh, can ignore the wisdom uh, uh, and I'm, I'm, I, of Frederick Nietzsche. I mean, he was also insane, uh, but there were parts of him that were brilliant. He certainly understood the consequences of a culture where God was dead, the kind of moral nihilism and the will to power uh, that uh, I think have very much come to characterize uh, the ethos of modern society. Uh, writers such as Sartre and Camus uh, are serious uh, and should be taken seriously and heeded uh, for uh, their deep insights into the human condition. So I actually came towards these new atheists fairly predisposed to accept uh, the tradition that they said they represented. Uh, upon reading their works, however, uh, and engaging in a debate with them, uh, I was appalled uh, to find that what they had done is essentially replicate the fundamentalist beliefs uh, of Christian conservatives uh, uh, in sec with secular language, in secular garb, uh, that they had, uh, like the uh, radical Christian right, uh, created a binary worldview of us and them, of good and evil, of black and white. Uh, they externalize evil in the same way the Christian right does. Evil is not something within the human heart, endemic to all of us, something that we must all struggle against, but evil is a force out there that once we eradicate will allow us to advance forward morally, if not to a perfect society, to a more uh, perfect society. Um, this kind of utopian vision wedded to uh, the dangerous belief that violence uh, can be used to advance this vision, to purify the world, uh, is characteristic of most utopian movements. Uh, and these movements have been the curse of modern society since uh, probably the Jacobins in France. Uh, it goes back, of course, to the Enlightenment itself. Um, the Enlightenment was uh, a blessing in many ways, a reaction to the anti-intellectualism, repression, superstition, bigotry of the church, um, but it was also a curse. Uh, what the Enlightenment did is it adopted the notion of the linear notion of time, uh, which is uh, a product, a peculiar product, actually, of the Hebraic and the Christian traditions. The idea that we are moving towards redemption or salvation. This is completely foreign in Oriental religions, uh, completely foreign to the ancient Greeks, who believed that uh, 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 both individual life and societal or communal life was about birth, growth, degeneration, decay, and death. That there was a cyclical quality to existence. Um, but what the Enlightenment did is it dropped the wisdom of original sin. Uh, it, uh, you know, I think stated probably most clearly by uh, Augustine in City of God, City of Man, his great work, uh, where he uh, argued that uh, the perfect society or the, uh, the City of God uh, could only be created by God, that it was incapable of being created by humankind because we were endemically flawed. Uh, the Enlightenment jettisoned this idea and put their faith in science, rational human beings, and knowledge as a way to advance humankind and create a more perfect world. Uh, this uh, belief uh, is extremely dangerous because uh, it is a short step, as the Jacobins proved with the uh, Committee of Virtue and the Reign of Terror, uh, that once you define certain groups of human beings as impediments to that progress, if you uh, believe that they are incapable of being converted or reformed, uh, then they must be eradicated. And I think uh, the, uh, the vast killing projects of, uh, that we saw in the last century by communists and fascists uh, was directly tied to that Enlightenment vision. Um, the new atheists uh, argue, in some ways, uh, along these lines, 
Uh, but what they have done, uh, I think like uh, many utopians, is distort uh, the, the, uh, the very disciplines that they claim as the basis for their ideology. For example, the idea that we can advance morally, uh, that, there, that human beings uh, make uh, progressive steps towards moral improvement uh, is not borne out empirically. Uh, there's nothing in human nature or human history that suggests that we advance morally. Um, the idea that evolutionary biology can be used as a kind of blueprint for human activity uh, is childish and naive at best. Uh, let me give you an example. Um, politics, for instance, is fitfully in contact with the rational. Uh, this is something that Sigmund Freud understood uh, and allowed Freud to write his masterpiece, Civilization and Its Discontents, uh, which eerily sort of forecast the uh, self-annihilation uh, and conflagration that uh, gripped Europe uh, during the Second World War. Uh, it's also a misuse of Darwinian science. Uh, there's nothing in the origin of the species that uh, suggests that we are advancing morally. Uh, Darwin uh, writes, in fact, and I think correctly, the opposite, that we are products of irrational behavior, of animal instincts. Uh, species certainly accrue mutations, uh, but Darwin is too good a scientist to ever posit where that will end up. Uh, and what they've done is take evolutionary biology, and, uh, and which perhaps can, is useful at times as an analogy, and use it as a kind of blueprint for human behavior. Um, they have uh, essentially uh, created a, um, a definition of religion uh, that embodies all evil. Uh, religion is responsible for violence, uh, for... Uh, superstition, for ignorance, and certainly there's no question that religious groups uh, have and religious institutions are culpable uh, to this charge. Uh, but this simplistic view of the world, which I think is very much replicated by the radical Christian right, uh, ignores uh, the complexity and the ambiguity and the outside forces that go into creating fanaticism. Uh, the idea, for instance, that people read the Koran and become a suicide bomber, uh, ignores uh, the long, slow drip of repression, collective humiliation, abuse, uh, occupation uh, that go into creating fanaticism. Uh, terrorism is what you do when you don't have uh, what you use as a weapon to create maximum mayhem and chaos and murder when you don't have artillery or planes uh, or uh, cruise missiles. And, uh, you know, there's no shortage of studies by Pape and others uh, that go into explaining the forces that go into creating uh, uh, desperate characters who carry out desperate acts. Uh, one of the things that uh, disturbs me most about the radical Christian right and the new atheists is this self exaltation, this elevation of us uh, above others. That the kind of moral superiority, the relegating of other people to more, moral inferior levels, um, the kinds of things that the new atheists, for example, write about Muslims could be lifted from the most rabid sermon by a Christian fundamentalist. Their political agenda completely converges, and I think that's not accidental.